Hello friends, in this episode we are going to see how we can actually manage patients with COVID positive at home. All over the world as well as in even in India, the government is asking people who are mildly symptomatic and uh, not having much complications, they are asking them to stay at home and take, uh, take care of themselves at home. So, but there are a lot of uh, anxiety and queries around what are the things that we can do at home and what we should not be doing. We are going to have a discussion about it today and uh, we have Dr. Srividya uh, who is a consultant in, uh, and family physician and also she was trained in UK for a long time and she's going to give us some opinion and expert advice on how we can actually handle patients with COVID positive at home. Dr. Srividya, thank you for joining us and um, who are the candidates that who can be actually at home? There are uh, quite a few cases can be managed at home and who are the candidates who can be managed. So majority of the patients who have no symptoms or who have mild symptoms, just a, some mild fever and runny nose, cough, some breathing issues should not be there. So mainly fever, runny nose, mild cough and little bit of body ache like any other viral fever if they have and if they are COVID positive, they can be safely managed at home. There are questions about, yeah, I have a di I am a diabetic, I have a BP problem, can I be at home? Yes, you can definitely be at home provided your sugar control is good, your blood pressure control is good. So patients who have mild symptoms, no symptoms at all, whose uh, other medical conditions are under control, then they can be safely managed at home. So what are the things they should be doing in terms of isolation and taking care of their health? Uh, so the few points are very important. I would probably make it as three to four important checklist patients should have in mind when they decide to do home isolation. So once your report comes positive, the government official will contact you. That's the format which has been happening. The government official will contact you and you can decide about home isolation if you have if you fulfill the criteria for home isolation. There are a few things you need to have one. You need to have somebody with you who can be your dedicated caregiver. So someone at home, it can be your spouse, it can be your parent, it can be your friend who stays with you can be a dedicated caregiver who should be able to provide you food at regular time, making sure you're fine. So that caregiver is important. Number two, there is a particular medical kit to have. One is important thing is a pulse oximeter which is a digital pulse oximeter available everywhere online you can buy it probably I would suggest majority of us if you can buy it and keep it at home it would be a good idea to do number two thermometer to check your temperature number three if you have any sugar or BP problem glucometer or blood pressure only if you have otherwise thermometer and pulse oximeter is more than enough you have to monitor them at least thrice a day and make a note of it because if you are going to do home isolation, the government official will call you on regular basis and check. The doctor from the government sector will call you and check it on a regular basis. So one is a caregiver, number two is a medical kit, number three is making sure you eat properly. So healthy diet is very important with good amount of fluids and proper nutrition in terms of high protein, lots of fruits and veg, those things are important. Number four, you should have a separate room and a separate washroom so that room is the only place you can be there and you have to be wearing mask all the time and the waste disposal also has to be done properly there is a very good guideline given on how to dispose waste which probably we can send the link or something like that when it is needed but these four criteria is important caregiver dedicated room where it is only for you and the washroom attached to it number three is a medical kit number four is a healthy diet and fluids so if you have all these four in your place then it shouldn't be a problem if you fulfill the criteria for a home isolation um, uh, some of us may not have the separate room and uh, in Indian setting a lot of us uh, they might be even living uh, in a single room or two rooms um, house in, with two rooms so is that a, is that a challenging uh, uh, situation for them uh, yes it is definitely a tricky one that's why the government has come up with COVID care centers so people who are not able to have a separate room and washroom they are supposed to be coming to the COVID care centers and they may not be able to fit the criteria for home isolation
So um, you say you said about diet. Is there any restrictions about diet? Can I eat actually non-vegetarian food and uh, egg and things like that? Is it okay, or should I be just sti- just sticking onto the vegetarian diet? See, high protein diet is very very important. You can have so we generally advise patients to have at least one or two eggs every day if they are a person who regularly eats egg. Non-veg can be uh, taken, but provide make sure it's not too oily, not too spicy. Lighter high protein diet is perfectly fine. Of course, veggies, fresh vegetables, and fruits are important with good amount of fluids. So, high protein diet, good amount of fluids, and regular simple diet, not too oily, not too spicy, and not much of fizzy drinks. Simple fresh fruits and vegetables are perfectly fine. What about uh, going to the hospital? When they should be actually going to the hospital? What are the danger signs they need to uh, keep looking for? This is very very important. So, in terms of the symptoms, when do you go to the hospital? One is if the fever is continuous, if you have uh, breathlessness, which means you feel difficulty to breathe and you have any chest discomfort, definitely that's a time to go to the hospital. Also, you have a pulse oximeter at home. If you notice your ox- oxygen saturation is going below 94% or your pulse rate is going above 100 then that is a time you should definitely go to go to the hospital talk to your doctor who is regularly monitoring you and get help and go to the hospital as soon as possible okay i think that is much clear so if you follow this guidelines i think it will be very useful and they can actually be very well staying at home and provided they need to keep looking for the danger signs that you you said especially the breath, breathing difficulty and fee- and um, chest pain or any fever which is persistently going high yeah those are the danger signs which warrant them to go to the hospital thank you with you